Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how you doing? So we're back at the inn, and I have just gone through my belongings and gotten rid of most of the stuff that we don't need, as we are now a sword and board paladin, and we're no longer a, um, an ar- uh, is it arms? Hang on, I can tell you now, I can actually have a look. A, a, a ret paladin, we're no longer a retribution paladin. We're now a sword and board, which is a single-handed weapon and a shield, so we're a protection. So we don't need the two-handed weapon, I can get rid of that. But we had this one, and it was just a green that had dropped, and I decided to equip it. Because, quite frankly, I like the look of it. I like the little skulls that it's got right here, if you have a look at that there. I think that looks really cool. It's just unfortunate that it is actually leather and not plate. And we're a plate wearer. So really, we're going to need to use the plate. So we'll only wear this one for a short while. I'm just going to turn it round so that we can just sort of take a little look and admire. And we've got several items here for food. So what I'm going to do for a minute is I'm very quickly... The charred wolf meat just gives food. Um, but the spiced wolf meat, that one there, that gives us, if we eat for at least 10 seconds, we gain an extra two stamina. So if we create all of those, we can start leveling up our cooking a little bit. And then when we've leveled up, um, well, well, we'll sort of use up these materials that we've got. We don't have anything that we can do with the mackerel at the moment. Um, although there are recipes around that you can use for, um, for, you know, you, you can do things with the mackerel. Uh, we've got our engineering as well and our mining. We've got 51 copper ore over here. So we'll probably just nip across the road in a second and smelt those down. We've got the Calderai spider kebab. And we will just make all of those. So three of those, us using up the spider legs. And we will get more spider legs later on. So we at least we've got a use for these. So our cooking is now up to 26. The cooking trainer, his next one is level 40. But... It's mo mainly you get uh, drops as you go along. You get things dropped that you can use. There's nothing here. There's no more recipes here. We could go and find some recipes in Stormwind itself, but we're not going to worry about those at the moment. What we are going to do, Marshall Dugan, he's got that quest that is sending us over to Westfall, and we don't want to go over there. So here in the forge, uh, we want to go and actually use the forge for a moment. So we want to go to our mining skills and smelting. And we want to smelt all 51 bars of copper that we've got. So I will just sit here and let this happen for a minute. And then I will get back to you. We've got just 8 bars left. 7 and 6. And we're up to 49 of 75 on our mining. One more. Am I hoping we'll get one more with these 3 bars? We should do... Yes. Increase to 50. Right. Once you reach 50, you can actually go and level up your mining skill to the next tier. Um, which is something that we really want to do, although it would be useful if we were to do a bit more engineering first. So if we make a little bit more of this, we want to make... Well, we'll make all of the dynamite that we can, because the dynamite is actually really useful. And we haven't used it very much lately, but we will start using it a bit more, because it is really good stuff. So I'm going to make another... Actually, I'm going to make exactly seven of these. There we go. So create seven of those. That will leave uh, 30 rough stone. Oh, it doesn't really matter, actually. The rough stone, um, that's like really, really cheap. That's the easiest thing to find. And we're not going to use rough stone for anything else. If I just create all and we just make a great big stack of rough blasting powder. Now, if we don't use it, we don't use it. We can ditch it, get rid of it. We can make a little bit more rough dynamite. But I'm hoping that after making a load of this, we will then be able to get some more bits. So I'll just let this finish making a minute. And there we go. It's just now reached 40 with the second to last one. So that's now gone grey, the rough blasting powder bit. That means that you don't get any more level ups from crafting that particular item. This will give us level ups, but we're exactly 40 engineering. So if we take what we've got, I suspect that what we've got is going to be enough that we can find uh, a level up up in Stormwind. Because Stormwind is where the engineering and oh, the mining right. trainers are over in the Dwarven District. So yeah, that's right. where we want to head. If we fly back up there now, I know that we've got the rest of the stuff in Elwyn Forest to finish. We've got these few to do here. Um, there's a couple of quests that we'll... Um, see, so we've got these quests down here and over around the Eastvale Logging Camp. There's another one up there with the Murlocs. Although we were going to head down this way and get Murlocs down here. Um, we can finish up Elwyn Forest today, I'm hoping. And then when we finished up Elwyn Forest, we're going to move from here into... Uh, or from Elwyn Forest, we're going to go over into the uh, Red Ridge Mountains. That's level 15 to 20. 
we're going to go to Duskwood at level 20. That is the plan. Now, we're level 11 at the moment. Now, um, actually, we could probably go to Duskwood at level 18 and still get all of the quests. So, hopefully, that will all work out quite nicely. We'll be able to do all of that, and then we can really get stuck into the whole Duskwood area. Now, several people have been saying to me that... They like, this series has kind of inspired, I think I may have mentioned this last week actually, but I'm going to mention it again because I'm very pleased and I've had more people saying, this series has inspired them to go and start leveling a new character. Um, and what we often do when we go and level a new character is right. We've got a new character, in order to start playing the game we've got to level up to max level. So we throw on a load of heirlooms and we get boosts and anything else that we can and we power level our way through as quickly as we possibly can then when we get to max level we think right what professions do i want go to the auction house buy five grand's worth of stuff and just stand in stormwind and make everything all at once and then we got our professions leveled up as well and then our character is good to go yeah um there's a reason i don't have a lot of alts the reason i don't have is uh, i don't have all the uh, the alts that a lot of people have is because i like to take my time i like to enjoy the whole leveling process to me the game starts from the moment you create your character this is all part of the game this is what i love to do i, I like to to get immersed into my character's story i mean this character he's a middle-aged man he's seen his entire livelihood his farm completely destroyed his family survived his children have grown up they've gone away um his wife is now living here in stormwind and we have decided to take up a sword and join the side of good to protect the world from all of the darkness because quite frankly the darkness was getting scary um and so that's what we're going to sort of work our way into that all the way through if we can so we can make a handful of copper bolts and we can do a rough copper bomb. So if we can train both of these a minute. There we go. And now if we take a look into our engineering skills, the rough copper bomb, that also requires a handful of copper bolts. So the rough dynamite, that's great. But this bomb here, this does more damage. Unreliable against targets higher than level 24. This just does damage, the, the dynamite. So we'll use... the Excuse me, I've got the hiccups now. We use the um, the dynamite first. In order to make that, we need a blacksmith hammer, and we need it for that one. So if we go here to the engineering supplies, Would you like to purchase something? we can get a blacksmith hammer. Now, there is something that you can get later on, which is really cool. I've got it on my um, mostly leveled well, character, uh, my, my paladin. Well, she's actually like level 92 or something, uh, but she's got something on there that is really, really cool that I really particularly like. Uh, that's the Legion Engineering. We don't need to worry about that. This is the Drenor stuff. Is it in here? don't think it's in Drenor stuff either. I think it is all of the... In Classic somewhere. There is an item. And it's it's not in parts. I'm looking in the wrong part. Uh, Tinkers? No, I don't think it's in Tinkers. No, I, want, I really want to show you this one. You get Goblin and you get uh, Gnome Engineering. Goblins are generally explosives. And then Gnome Engineering is other stuff. And there's some very cool things in both sides that you can use. Ghost Iron Dragonling. I've used this one quite a lot. I had that one on my main character for quite a while. It is a very cool thing to have. The Wormholes, they're just fun. You, you can have all kinds of fun with those. Uh, thermal Anvil, that is brilliant. It basically is a portable anvil and forge that you can drop down anywhere you want. It's really useful. Um... I do use there's another wormhole generator there for Northrend. Such fun you can have using those. Um, the toolboxes don't really matter. Where is the thing that I wanted to show you? It's not here. It's a knife that basically gives you everything all at once. And it doesn't look like it's here. Scopes, cogwheels, fireworks. Oh, it's right under tools. There we go. So you get the arc light spanner to start with. Um... You need this for various engineering things, and then you've got the micro adjuster that you get a bit later on, and a bladed pickaxe, 10 mining and 10 skinning. You can use those as a combination of my if you're using mining and skinning together. The hammer pick, 10 mining does not need to be equipped, used as a mining pick or a blacksmith hammer, which is awesome. And the gnomish army knife. An engineer with at least 350 skill can overload the knife's battery and attempt to shock a dead ally back to life once every 30 minutes. 
Plus you get mining, herbalism and skinning all plus 10. This one, it includes everything else, including the um, the blacksmith hammer. I mean, look at the description. Includes gyromatic micro adjuster, arc light spanner, jeweler's kit, blacksmithing hammer, back scratcher and whirly thing. It's brilliant. The Nomish Army knife is like the perfect tool. But we can't get that until we have engineering level 435. And I love that tool. That is, of all the different things that you can make, that is probably got to be my absolute favorite. But anyway, I have um, been uh, di diverted. And once again, I did so very, very easily. So what we want to do is we want to make a few copper bolts. And as always, I come over to this guy here, Therum Deepforge, because he taught me all the blacksmithing I know, or at least to start with, on my main character on Frithgar. So I always like to come over and use his forge and blacksmith anvil if I can. So what we're going to do here is we can we could just turn all the copper into copper bolts. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to actually... I'm just going to click create all, but I'm just going to watch it and I'm not going to sort of overdo it because I want to make a few rough, rough copper bombs and we might want copper bars for something else as well. I'm not quite sure what we might want them for, but I'm sure there's got to be something in there somewhere that we'll end up using it for. So I'm going to do this for a little bit and then I will actually no. I'll tell you what, let's just let it go up another couple of points. Yep, see, it's already turned to green, so when that reaches 55, that is probably going to go grey, I would imagine. So we can just hang on a second. Go on, you can do this. Oh no, 55 is still green. Right, that's probably going to go all the way to 60 on green. And ideally, that's what you would do. You, you would do that as like the most efficient way to do it. But we're not going to do that because we don't have to go for efficiency every time. We're going to make a few rough copper bombs just because we can and it's fun. So that's now gone to 60. Everything else has gone grey. We've just got that one is on a yellow. So if it's orange, you get a level up point every time. If it's yellow, you do most times. And if it's green, you do sometimes. So green, you could make five or six items without getting a, um, a level up point, which can be really frustrating for people because, you know, you get all these mats together and you need to just get up that tiny little bit. And it is a bit of RNG. It's his random number generating... Um, involved in there as well which can make it a bit frustrating for people so let's just go to the engineering trainer and now we can make an arc like spanner uh so let's train that one we can make a rough boomstick which is a gun uh guns are now only used by um hunters you used to be able to have a gun as a warrior as well you could use them for like long range taunts i think you could use them on a paladin i don't actually no i don't think you could use them on a paladin I can't remember now, but anyway, um, you can no longer use guns on anything but a hunter. It's the hunter is the only one now that can use a gun. So let's just put our copper bolts over there, and uh, we'll put the dynamite up there as well, the rough blasting powder. We're going to get some bigger bags at some point. And there's our food as well. That's all done. So speak to the engineering trainer again. We forgot to level up the journeyman training, so we do that there. So now Off our potential skill for engineering is out of 150 so we, we've got all these extras a rough boomstick that will level us up four points if we do that if we go and buy a wooden stock we've got malachite there so we don't actually have any we could make one of these we can make an arc light spanner we need a blacksmith hammer and an anvil so we'd have to go and do that we'll need an arc light spanner later on for different things um so we go to engineering supplies and we can get for the rough boomstick you need a wooden stock so we want one of those should we get two of those there we go. All right, I didn't actually intend this episode when I first started it to be all about professions, but it's kind of turning out. We are going to be doing some other stuff as well. Don't worry. Fear not. Don't worry. We'll do some other stuff. But we want to make an arc like spanner. That one give us two level up points. It's absolutely brilliant. We don't need lots of arc light spanners, so we're not going to make lots of them. The boomsticks. Now, you could sell those in auction house. You could just sell them to a merchant. You could also sell them, uh, you send them to someone that's doing um, enchanting and use them that way. Now, what do we want? We, if we get another wooden stock, have we got it's, uh, blacksmithing supplies? Are they? Do you have a wooden stock? You've got various uh, blacksmithing plans. Hardened elementium bars. See, this is all the expensive stuff. Uh, no, so that's, that's just blacksmithing stuff, so we can't get any of it from her. If we get two more, maybe? I've got a feeling that 75 is where the rough boomstick will change over. So we'll only get two, we'll get two more heavy stock, uh, wooden stocks. One and two. There we go. 
and run back over here. So that will still leave us some copper bolts and some copper bars. This is why you don't convert all of your copper bars immediately because you never know when you might need some more. So we create one of those and... Oh no, it's still... I, I'm amazed. So that's probably going to be 80 where it turns. So we do one more and then it will change over. There we go. I thought it would eventually. Now the crude scope, because it requires malachite, that's a little bit more difficult to come by. So that's probably why it's um, taking time. You never used to have these multiple power-ups, uh, level-ups, when you were leveling a skill. It used to be one point per thing and it stayed like that. I think it was Drenor that it first introduced the multiple um, skill-ups. It might have it even been before then. But yeah, so now you get multiple skill ups for individual items, which is absolutely brilliant. So we can do that. We can make coarse dynamite. We can't do those until we start making, uh, start mining um, tin. Why am I looking in cooking? We want to go here. Coarse blasting powder requires coarse stone. And you don't get coarse stone until later on. Now, the rough boomstick. I'm just going to show you the auction house. For those of you who don't know the auction house, um, here is the auction house we go and we speak to. We will speak to auctioneer Fitzgerald. And this is the basic auction. I don't actually have auctioneer loaded. I use auctioneer on my auction character all the time. It's absolutely brilliant. So there's no one selling a rough boomstick on the auction house. All I've done is I've moused over it and I've pressed and held shift and then I click and then I search. Nothing coming up. Okay. Now if I go and I check clan meat. There's a few of them have come up here. Um, you've got the succulents, you've got jaggle clam meat, and you've got plain clam meat there. Three gold fifty per piece. There's only one piece listed. So what we're going to do is we are going to try to list our ten clam meat. Now I think three gold fifty is an awful lot of money per. Um, and is that per item or is that for the whole stack? Uh, that. Oh, it's, per, it's because it's uh, only one item anyway. So, we've got these and we want per unit. I always work per unit. I find it a lot easier. So, our starting price is going to be one gold and our buyout price is going to be one gold 25. Not a great deal, but you keep in mind... Now, we're going to list that for 48 hours, the longest that we can. Keep in mind that 10 of those selling at one gold 25 each, that's going to be 12 gold 50. That's a huge sum of money, especially at our early level. Uh, if it sells. So we'll do that. And now we're going to take a look at the small lustrous pearls. Now these, sometimes the prices on these can vary hugely. So 38 silver they seem to be is the cheapest ones. And then you've got several here around 5 gold. Now this person here does have a lot of them. And so does this person. So I suspect that they are buying out the cheaper ones. And so we can take advantage of that. If we um, we take ooh, hang on we take the the small lustrous pearl now if you have a look here the deposit for the small lustrous pearl is two silver and forty copper some items are very expensive to list and you've got to keep that in mind you've got to always look at the deposit because if the deposit is very high it's just not worth it you may as well sell them to the vendor it's, it's just much cheaper. You must also look over them and see what your sell price is four silver the sell price that's for the two of them so. We get two silver each if we sell them to the vendor. Um, so we want more than two silver. Now, as we've got a load of them here at five gold, I suspect they're being bought out and then relisted and sold on again. So I think if we ask three gold fifty for each of these, we'll, we might get it. They, they might decide to buy ours out and then relist them a bit higher so they can make a profit out of it. We also make a good amount of money from these uh, pearls. So we'll create the auction there, two pearls, and a seven gold buyout. So, so far, our money's looking good. Now, obviously, this is only if people go and buy it. And that's a big if. That if kind of... it Empires have risen and fallen on such ifs in this game. They really, really have. So, one other thing we're going to do is we're going to go and look at uh, ranged weapons right here. And we look at guns. And we go to search. Now, what I want to do is I want to look at the cheaper stuff. Uh, there's 67 of them listed in total. All of these weapons are quite high level, so how do you want to go to the next page there? So I'm, I'm not very familiar with uh, negotiating my way around the um, original auction house thing because I'm used to using an, a bigger one. Uh, so we've got one here, the compact shotgun at level 8. They're asking 285. Now the rough boomstick, if I show you what that one looks like, it's not a very decorative item, is it? So it's not really going to be sought after by hunters for um, the transmogrification stuff. 
Whereas if you look at the Magic Eye blunderbuss, I mean that's not ideal either. It's not brilliant, but it's a bit it's a bit different. And several people have got that one. Um, you can look at these different ones. They're just different colours, basically. Um, you got that one. That one's bigger. It's got a bigger muzzle on the front. The explosive shotgun. What I'm doing here is I'm pressing Control and then click, and that shows you what the items look like without actually using them or buying them or anything else. So. The compact shotgun is, they're asking 200 gold. I don't think that we're going to get even close to that. But what I would like to do is I would like to at least try to sell our rough boomsticks. Um, we've got four of those. We're going to make four stacks. And I think if we could get one gold a piece for them, may, so we'll say maybe one gold 25. Because we can sell this one for three silver. It's going to cost us one, uh, so it's cheap to list as well. One silver 87, that's pretty cheap. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go one gold zero and we go one gold 25 um for the buyout so people can come along they can buy one of these for just one gold 25 it's not a lot of money but at least we're going to make back a little bit of extra cash with uh what we're doing here and they're all the same so we can just go create auction and we just you got to do this multiple times if you use auctioneer it does work out a lot better i much prefer using auctioneer if i can but anyway that's done and let's just tidy up our bags here a little bit. So, one more thing that we've got to do while we're here in Stormwind is we need to go to the mining trainer and we want to level up our mining so that we can then continue on with our mining skills. And we want to go into Stonehand Mining right here. And we will speak to Gelman Stonehand, oh. the mining trainer. He will teach us to smelt bronze and to smelt tin. So we go both of those and we go to Journeyman Miner as well. So we are now a Journeyman and expert we'll get at level 125 so we can go up to level 150 Watch now with the mining man. we will also be able to mine tin when we see the ores and we will be able so i'm going to hearth now right back to um goldshire we can we can get the um we've learned a new ability mining Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we'll be able to mine tin as and when we find it. I don't think you see very much in the way of tin before you get to... Oh! There's one thing I meant to do before we left, and that was to take a quick look at some other recipes to see what we can get over there. doesn't really matter. We can do that another time. Uh, recipes for cooking, that is. Have a good one. Right, so we'll fly over to the Eastvale logging camp. So much easier being able to do this now instead of having to run all the way up through here. It used to it used to take a very long time. So anyway, um, we are now going to go up here. I'm going to try and finish our quests that we've got started over here. That's most of the quests for Elwyn Forest then will be wrapped up today. And then we can move on into the Red Ridge Mountains. We're not going to stay in Red Ridge complete the story there. Because we want to move to Duskwood, and I would really like to be able to do Duskwood as quickly as I can. Um, then later on, when we get to a higher level, I will then start to look at doing some, um, uh, some, some dungeons. But I wasn't planning on doing a lot in the way of dungeons just yet. Because dungeons, they, they really do uh, boost your leveling experience quite quite a lot it, it, it is quite a jump when you get your um your leveling experience doing it that way and i don't really want to do it at the moment right what have well, you got uh heroes call westfall we don't want that so what we're going to do is we've got um a couple of bears left to get we've got the torn murloc fins and the bears right where do i want to go i want to go down this way what i'm going to do is i'm going to head over here we've got the linen scraps and we've got manhunt the collector's ring to do down here um, so we can do those quests, and then there's Murlocs down here that we should be able to do the Murloc quest with as well. Um, and then, it, like I said, there's also bears down here. And we can finish uncovering all of Elwyn Forest. I think that is actually all of Elwyn Forest, unless there's a bit here that we haven't actually uncovered yet. I don't think there is. I think we're okay. I think we're good on that. Now, we've got a load of Prowlers. Now, it's not a bad thing, us getting a load of Prowlers coming over here. Um, so, oh no, I don't want Flash of Light. I thought I had Taunt. I'll do it like that. And I want to get that bear over there. So I'm just going to wait for that to come. And I'm get him over here as well. Right. Now that I've got them all here, then I can <laughs> shield his savage. That's brilliant. Right. The reason I'm doing this is because the wolves drop that meat. And the, um, it's really quite useful for doing our... There we go. The stringy wolf meat, which we want for our um, cooking skills. To level up our cooking a little bit. Uh, so it's never a bad thing to do that. 
throw in that one again and there we go another stringy wolf meat so we, um, we don't need to kill wolves anymore it's the torn murloc fins that we need ah there we go right murlocs we need to get a load of murlocs so that we can get their torn fins because the torn fins don't drop very well there's a, a poor drop rate on those which is slightly frustrating so if i could get that one like I've said before, they do have a very high aggro range. And so you can normally aggro a load of them from a long distance. And they will just keep following you and never stop. Which is really good. It's what we want here. Um, because of being able to fight them and keep them going. And that's the joy of being able to use a protection paladin. Is that the protection paladin just keeps going and going. Look at this. I took four of them on. I mean, I took even more than this on last time. We got, we want one more. We want just one more. So if I, all I got to do is I just got to run over here. And a little bit further. Let's stop about here. I heard another one coming towards us. So we use that shield first. And then I can just start attacking madly like this. Now, we've got with, with... I mean, our health is absolutely fine. A 300 health is absolutely fine. We've got no problems with that. But you, it does pay to stay on top of it just in case you accidentally aggro a whole load of extra ones um, without realizing it. You do kind of want to make sure that you don't over-aggro. Or at least uh, while you're fighting, you don't allow your health to drop too much because otherwise bad things could happen. Now, the spice bread, we don't actually want to use that. But what we do want to use is the uh, Calderai Spider Kebabs and the spice wolf meats they're both the same so if we use these up first that's one stack that we no longer need to use so we'll get rid of the spice bread that's taking up space in our bags that we want to keep um it's these here where i got the the pearls you get the clam meat from them and you also occasionally you get the small lustrous pearls from them um we didn't get any there today so if i sit down and i eat that you sit and you eat for a minimum of uh, 10 seconds and then you gain the food buff which is really good some more copper over there so we'll go grab that in a second right so now we have well fed stamina increased by two for uh 15 minutes now two stamina for us does make quite a significant difference it is quite a nice boost on our um total overall health and um, so you just need to sort of keep that in mind when you're getting your little boosts some stats can really make a difference now when you're higher in level it doesn't give you such a big percentage increase by having just a couple of points so obviously you want the higher level foods which will make a it makes a significant difference but you can still eat the lower level foods if you want to role play a bit you can eat any foods you like and you do get the small buffs um oh we've leveled up again level 12 we now have the hand of reckoning that is our taunt and that is brilliant that is one that i really wanted to get um where is oh the the campfire so if you if you make a campfire we'll make a campfire here one thing i do miss about the the old game so here increase versatility by four you only get a one minute buff on this and one thing that i do miss from the old game uh is you used to need reagents to make a campfire if you wanted to make a campfire you used to have to take some used to carry around some timber with you you have to go and get timber and you used to have to use that to make a campfire you no longer need to do that you now you can just have it with exactly as it is you don't need to carry the reagents for it and i kind of miss that it oh that the little dots here it's a um add-on called gather mate and basically it just shows you where the ores are left behind i didn't actually intend to have it active on this particular character i've got it because i'd like to use it on my main character a little more it's just going to be a useful thing to have on there so that's why i picked that one up um but i know it doesn't hurt it shows you where you've mined stuff so that you can um keep a record of it and then when you're going back around again you can it gives you an idea of the best places to go now can we get in here and oh, well, we haven't got any choice we're going to have to take on everything all at once so what we're going to need to do is her over there i'm going to just stun her a minute and then i'm going to go back to these main ones and we've got the collector there so let's deal with him as he's quite low um get rid of that one and now we've got the bandit he's quite weak so i can get rid of that one pretty quickly hand of reckoning now our health is getting low quickly shoot the shield into that one and then serena is the last one and she's down and we've done it nicely done it wasn't easy but i feel that we handled that admirably well i was quite pleased with that right 
Uh, we've got three bandits here. Three bandits shouldn't be any... Oh, no, there's another one in there. I'm actually going to see if I can taunt him. Actually, no, I'm going to taunt that one up there with uh, my new hand of reckoning. And then that guy in there, I'm going to pull him out as well. Like I said at the beginning, I want to fight. And this character is all about fighting. He is about making the world a better place. His whole livelihood, his farm was destroyed, all his livestock stolen and slaughtered. So he is he's full of righteous fury, which means he's not going to hang back and take on one at a time timidly from the shadows. This guy, he's going to go in and he is going to lay down. He is going to be the holy avenging fire and he is going to lay a beat down on several people all at once. So we are going to play that as a character as we go through. We are not going to timidly fight from the shadows. We are going to go in and we are going to trust that the light will hold us and will protect us. That is how we're going to do this. And I'm quite... That's, I'm sort of... This is what I mean by getting into my characters. Um, I get it. I've got a warrior that I play a lot, um, or I have played. I haven't played her for quite a while. And that's a female character. I've got another paladin, my main paladin character. She's like level ninety-two again. It's another female. My main character, Frithgar. He's a warlock, and then I've got um, a priest as well. I haven't played the priest for a very long time. I kind of lost. Um, enthusiasm for the priest quite a while ago so I don't really play that one anymore um, and by the way we did all of that with our badass leather shirt on look at that we didn't even use the plate armor to do all that I mean we are gonna change over now because um, we kind of need to but yeah I'm, I'm on the lookout for something like this that I think the bare arms is pretty cool uh, although as a paladin really he's he's gonna prepare himself he's, he's middle-aged which means I'm middle-aged, so I'm, I'm, I can kind of relate to this. He's going to be more cautious. He's not going to just go charging in. He's going to prepare himself before, beforehand. But when the battle rage rises within him, he will then charge in. And I've gone for Paladin rather than Warrior because of the whole, um, you know, he's he's fighting for righteousness and for, and for good. Um, and... I can get behind the story. It's not one that I really tend to go for a huge amount every time, but I can still get behind it. But anyway, how goes the hunting, Grundorn? You have the fins. Great. Marshal Dugan is anxious about the Murloc situation in Eastern Elwyn. I'd like to tell him that it's becoming under control. Your actions have helped realize that. So we can have a one-handed solid metal club or a two-handed sword. Right, so we want this one here. That is plus 0.6 damage per second. I think that's a good start. Protect the frontier. Thanks a lot for the help, Grundor. Something in the forest must be making these animals so bold. Whatever it is, I hope it stays there. You will receive a... Oh, that's a nice green, that is. Okay, excellent. And we also get some lesser healing potions, which are useful in a bind. Um, except that we have our flash of light, so, you know, we kind of... We got both. Hello, Grundor. Have you discovered the fates of Rolf and Malachi? You have confirmed my fears, Grundor. The Murlocs are a threat we cannot ignore. For your shrewdness and valour, I have a marker here that is good for one piece of armour. I want you to take it to Sarah Timberlane in the Eastvale Logging Camp. Give her the marker and she will fashion the armour for you. And after you receive it, Grondorn, use it in the defence of Elwyn. Eastvale is just east of this post across the bridge. Okay. Go with honor, friend. Uh, no, we don't want to do the Westfall call for arms. So, we now have a uh, armour marker that we can go and take to Sarah Timberlane. Um... She's just over here. I know it says the um, Stormwind Armor Marker, but she is just over here. This is one thing that I never quite get used to when I'm playing World of Warcraft, is everything is American spellings and not uh, UK English spellings. Um, armor, we spell armor A-R-M-O-U-R and not O-R. Not just the O-R, we've got a, there's a U in there as well. Um, and... All of that, like flavor, color, all of those. Having that U missing, it does look very strange. It, and I never quite get used to it. Uh, anyway, um, cloth and leather armor. 
It's been commissioned. I have been commissioned by this Torment army to supply their people with cloth and leather armor. If you have a marker for me, then I'd be happy to make you something. So we can hand that one in. Oh, thank you for the marker. Please feel free to pick your choice of armor. Lucky to have you, brave paladin, and may this armor serve you well. Studded arm protector. That's a plate one. One strength, one stamina. The intellect on there, we don't actually use. You used to use intellect with paladins. If you wanted to be a healing paladin, then you had to have intellect. And you used intellect for some other things as well. Uh, but they, they kind of simplified that several uh, expansions ago. I'm running low on linen, Grundor. Do you have any for me? We have a load of linen. Ah, these are nice scraps, if a little rough. Here you are. So we have a plate belt. Again, you've got the intellect on there, the plus one intellect. And we have a red linen shirt. Now, the red linen shirts do look pretty snazzy. That is my timer to say that we have run out of time, which is a little unfortunate because we haven't quite finished everything that I wanted to get done today. So, first of all, let's remove our top. There we go. Look at that bare chest. Don't we look magnificent? That is awesome. Okay, uh, it's enough admiring our bare chest. And if we go for the red linen shirt, yes, I do want to... There we go. That looks very snazzy. Oh, the little skulls are not from the shirt. They're not from the burnt leather vest. They're actually from our cloak. They're the pins for the cloak, which is a little unfortunate because... That means those pins on our cloak are actually digging into our chest. We are harder than nails, ladies and gentlemen. Harder than nails. Look at that. <laughs> we've, got our, we've got our cloak pinned to our bare chest. That's brilliant. I like that. Okay, and we have the shrouded bearskin breastplate, so we can attach that one as well. So you can see we've got the, the red underneath there. It's actually showing off quite nicely. Um... I think that works out better. I think I prefer having the red underneath. That does look quite good like that. And then we have the studded arm protectors. Uh, one strength, one stamina. The intellect is now ignored. We don't, doesn't make any difference to us. Um, we have the reinforced plate belt. We want to add that one as well. That one is no longer valid. Neither are any of these. Oh, and we have the solid metal club as well. So we can equip that one. We now, if I press Z, he will bring out his weapon. That is what we're going to be using. That one right there. It doesn't look as much like a club as I thought it would, but I'm sure it's going to do plenty of damage. So, we are equipped. We are ready to fight. Let's put the weapons away. You press Z to do that, by the way, just in case anybody's wondering. Press Z and it will um, bring weapons out and put them away again. So, we've got a couple more quests just to turn in very quickly. Light Supervisor Raylin. The deadline isn't getting further away, Paladin. Please hurry and collect those bundles of wood. Yeah, sure. I'm helping you out, but you're sounding very rude to me, aren't you? Excellent. Thanks to you. I should be able to complete the order in time. To show my gratitude, I'd like to offer some coin as compensation for your troubles. Thank you and farewell. Okay, you, you kind of brought it back at the end there, um, where you weren't quite so sort of passive-aggressive towards me. Safe travels. <laughs> right. And one last quest. Do we get any more from here, or do we just go straight through to Redridge? Did you find the Collector? Did you discover whom he's working for? You found him. Well done, Grundorn. He won't be collecting from Elwyn Mines again. And this ring you found is interesting. It's a membership ring from the old Stonemason's Guild in Stormwind. I haven't seen one of these in years since back in the days when the Defias Brotherhood used to infest this land. Oh, that was a long time ago. That was a very long time ago. Right, uh, so now we've got the Westfall quest. And that's it. We have completed Elwyn. And we, we can just go down there, and we're going to take a look down there. But that is it, I think. And I'm pretty sure we've already uncovered it. Actually, I don't know. If we haven't uncovered that bit, maybe we want to do that. I would like to get Elwyn Forest at least uncovered before we leave. And we're going to head up here, and we're going to speak to the guy up the top here, because he also has a quest, Marshall Haggard. I've got a feeling that that quest is actually the hero's call once more. I'm hoping not, actually. Let's go up here and take a look. Marshall Haggard, sir. Light be with you. Yes, hero's call as well. For the alliance. Okay, that was a bit disappointing. Um, we'll head down below that tower and we'll uncover that portion of the map. I don't know if three, because we're level 12 and I'm not sure if that is going to be a high enough level to actually do the stuff that we need to in uh, Red Ridge. I'm pretty sure that two levels below, level 13, we should be good to go. Uh, but like I said, I'm not really sure about the other one. So Ridgepoint Tower, there's some copper over here. So let's go and... Ah, we've got it. We've got Explore Elwyn Forest. Excellent. And we can go and have a look on top of the tower in a second. Just go down to here and get the copper. There. That great big planet in the sky. That's Argus, apparently. And I haven't actually done anything to do with that on my main character yet. I have no 
sort of exploring of it whatsoever. But we're going to go up to the top of this tower and we're going to take a look. So this is Stormwind Folk in here, so we don't have anything to worry about. It's all good and safe. We don't have to fight our way to the top of this tower. But it's always cool to go in and take a look at the towers. We are going to head home in a second. We're going to head back to the inn. But you know, oh, I don't know. Well, I think we'll come and we'll make our first steps into uh, Red Ridge next time rather than doing it today. But there is the broken planet. That is Argus. That is another planet that has been taken over by the Legion. And each planet has a soul. This one is Ashura, and Ashura is deep within the planet's core. She's one of the most powerful titans in existence. Um, Argus, who was the planet's soul, like the titan in, in that planet there, has been... Um, captured by the legion and tortured and destroyed and that is what's left of the legion's home world over there doesn't look very good does it that looks like it's in a pretty bad way um it also looks a little bit worrying that it's so close and easy for us to see uh, bad things might be happening but anyway we have just about run out of time now well we have actually completely run out of time we have finished our exploration of elwyn forest so we are going to head over to redridge in next week's episode, we did a whole load of um, various different things today. Actually, I'll tell you what, we're going to go up to our room because it would be good to actually be able to have a room while we're staying at the inn. Except there's a major trainer in that room. There's people in this room as well. Uh, can we get no privacy here, ladies and gentlemen? Ah, here we go. Here's our room. We, we can have this as our room here, so let's let's just sit down. Have a little seat before we go, and right. If you enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give me a like. And if you really enjoyed it, please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. But until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.